to go ahead and adopt AI, then what, what should I have to go and look after? Now, this there you're seeing is a bunch of generated AI la application landscape. There are thousands of providers, if not, if, if not going 10,000s. How exactly you need to choose what platform becomes an imperative question that solves particular problem for AI. Now, if I have to break this down, that how exactly you can adopt private AI, that is build AI for your own use case, your own, your own efficient use cases as part of your organizations, you have to think about multiple layers. The first layer is going to be the application itself. Example, that how exactly you're going to consume the foundational LLMs, consume large language model, so that you are able to create those use cases for AI. So there'll be a front-end application, there will be LLM itself, where the models, I think our friend Google spoke about a few models, then we have a bunch of models that are there in the environment today. Then third comes the underlying infrastructure stack. If we have to truly build AI as part of our organization, then we have to cohesively stitch all of this together, and that's where Cisco can help you build this entire model stack. To break this down, you have multiple choices available today. You could go ahead and start something on cloud, that yes, cloud offers a particular model. You go ahead and consume that model out of this cloud stack. Second key segment is you could go ahead and build something that is available out of the box, that is build complete new infrastructure with our friends NVIDIA, where there is an end-to-end -end stack offering that, that we can go ahead and do that. But often, as our technology, as organizations evolve into a particular technology, they don't want to disrupt the entire landscape. They don't want to disrupt the entire IT infrastructure that they have today. So there is a possibility that you could go ahead and bake in much of the models that are available as part of your existing infrastructure setup. Now that's where we can help you build an alternate AI stack, which will take care of your existing infrastructure and enable AI use cases as part of the overall segment. Now, often comes a question, hey, I keep hearing about AI, but what, is AI relevant for me? What sort of use cases that I can go ahead and enable AI? Truly, we believe globally and in APJC, public sector is one of the key adopters for generative AI. So there are only two segments that will go ahead and excel. First is financial segment, second is around public sector segment. Out of these segments, most common use case for generative AI is something called as RAG, which is Retrieval Augmented Generative AI, okay? What does this mean? It is simple, that I have bunch of data set that is available with me, how exactly I could go ahead and query that data set to get the output. For example, in industry today, or as part of your organization, you could have multiple documents lying there. You could have PDFs, you could have uh, PPTs, you could have certain legal contract documents, you could have any set of documents. How exactly we could feed in that documents in a common model and retrieve information out of that? Think of it as document analysis, image analysis, object analysis, and any of these common popular use cases that, 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 we've gone ahead, that, that we can go ahead and implement. Other common use cases for AI is around video analytics. Now, we, we are seeing a wave in industry where we are adopting uh, for citizen safety or for garbage collection, safe city, smart city, office safety, bunch of use cases there which get enabled using video AI. So these are two popularly common use cases which we feel are going to be like an exploratory use case once we get into the core business as part of the overall, as part of the overall setup. Now let's understand if we have to go ahead and adopt this journey. I often tell customers AI is not just implementing one use case and relaxing out of that. It's not like an infrastructure stack or an application stack, say email, that you built an email and you're, you're happy with that. AI is truly going to be a journey, right from strategizing to testing to implementing it and then achieve or experience transformation that the technology can go ahead and provide. Now, out of this, as you, depending on your organization skill set, depending on your exploratory skill set, you could start strategizing AI today. 
for most of you would have already done it, or most of you would want to strategize in terms of, hey, how exactly can I implement this particular technology as part of my current setup, okay? Then an immediate thought comes into picture that most of the cloud service providers talk about this, so why not just go ahead and implement in one of the cloud service providers? That's absolutely okay, because that's your test phase. You could test your setup readily available today with any of the cloud services provider that is there as part of the overall offering. But once the AI hits scale, then you start thinking about cost because there's a lot of data sets. You have to give data, like the example that I said, uh, specifically around documents. There could be millions of files. You have to send the millions of files to cloud and then retrieve information from there, that could escalate costs, right? So cost could become one of the, one of the key parameters as you go ahead and implement, implement AI as, as, at mass scale. Second key pillar is around security, okay? Enough said about uh, AI, but if you think about how do I implement it at mass scale, that is feeding a lot of data. Unless you feed data, you're not going to get the accurate results. So as data sets get feeded, then comes the layer of security. People keep asking that how exactly is it secure to push the data outside and inside the organization, data classification, what is allowed, what is not allowed, and so on and so forth. Second key aspect on security is today, each one of us have built certain security stack. We already have a user security, we have a data security, uh, we, we have infrastructure security. The LLMs or the generative AI applications are complete black boxes. They don't allow you to go ahead and integrate with any of these security offerings. That means you have to redefine your security and think about another la layer of security there. So security becomes another bottleneck that we go ahead and talk about. And third is operations. Like I said, not many want to go ahead and build an entire new IT landscape and start using AI. AI is best suited if I can incorporate as part of my own existing infrastructure and then get the benefits of it. So these three are going to be top three reasons or top three pain points as customers go ahead and implement uh, or implement AI at mass scale. Now let's look at if we have to actually adopt this in our infrastructure setup, that if I have to adopt this today as part of our environment, what exactly are building blocks? Often we think about GPUs. Yes, GPU is a big backbone of AI, but GPU is not the only criteria to go ahead and build AI. It's not that I, I've shipped a couple of GPUs, now I can launch use cases. Like I mentioned, you have to feed the data, then you have to, the user has to experience that data. All of that is commonly called as inference. So training happens on GPU, Inference as a setup will happen on CPUs, and for all of this, you need network. Network becomes a backbone to actually help um, uh, move AI from, uh, from implementation to mass scale, because there are different types of network that, that gets generated. It is now inference data, it is your data preparation data sets, your training data, all of this data needs network to go ahead and scale the entire operation. Now, we at Cisco are the only providers who are helping customers adopt or offer enterprise AI networking that offers best price per performance, best power per, per power, uh, best power consumed per port, because number of ports keep on increasing as part of the setup, and then you might land up into a whole issue of power. So with Cisco Nexus and Silicon One portfolio, we are offered a full factory network design where customers can trust and trust the AI journey in confidence that you could go ahead and deploy your use cases at scale. These are highly performant AI ML networks offering 400 gig, 800 gig of throughput. We have one consolidated network. You don't need a different network for GPUs. You don't need a different network for CPUs. You don't need a different network uh, for, for any of the other data sets that are there. So one single network allowing you seamless operations providing you insights that where exactly is the issue as part of the setup. The issue could be at GPU to GPU communication, the issue could be CPU to CPU communication, the issue could be from your end user to end user to your data set communication. All of that insights is natively built in as part of the overall as part of the overall setup and in most sustainable fashion. We offer the least price per, per price per watt as part in, in the entire industry where customers can adopt this in confidence. Now, along with networking stack, we also offer 
AI-ready infrastructure. And why I call it AI-ready infrastructure? I've been harping upon the problem that customers today need not create separate farms. If you have to start AI, you don't need to create a separate farm to go ahead and build that. If you're using converged infrastructure stack, that is you use server separately, store it separately, uh, we could go ahead and enable AI as part of that setup. If you use hyper-converged stack, that means you're integrating compute storage networking stack, you could go ahead and build your AI journey as part of hyper-converged stack. Hyper -converged stack. So the flexibility of choice rests with you, and we offer something called as Cisco validated design. With this validated design, you could go ahead and implement AI, which is all AI engineering toolkits, uh, or your, your infrastructure toolkits, and enabling models to enable these use cases. So that's the power of platform that we go ahead and build that. One last point I want to highlight on a compute perspective is sustainability. If you think about GPUs, one full-fledged box of GPU is about 10 and a half to 11 kilowatt. Not many of our data centers are planned for that. I have customers who are hosting like five kilowatts per rack at a max of 15 kilowatts per rack, okay? One box of 5U unit taking 10 and a half kilowatts is like consuming entire rack then suddenly you have problems of rack space power cooling. That's where we tell customers, unless you are like large enterprises and launching something as a service, you could make do with shared pool of resources. With Cisco X-Series platform, we offer shared pool of GPU at a sustainable fashion where we have power and cooling sensors that will help you optimize your power and cooling as part of the overall setup, making it extremely viable for organizations to go ahead and adopt, a, uh, adopt AI. Now, just I, I wanted to show you a small example, right? So this is a demo of Llama 2. Llama 2 is a model. And this is a chat box. If you, if you can look at this chat box, I'm just asking, hey, what is Cisco UCS? And Cisco UCS is the answer that I go ahead and get, that UCS is one of unified computing system, it is Cisco's computing platform, and so on and so forth. So you get the entire system. Now, I'm asking the system that what are Intel's AI extension? And Llama 2 is actually responding that, hey, Intel's in latest, genre, uh, latest AI extension is all about AMX and CMX that we can go ahead and deliver. So this is a simple use case that I'm saying, that if you want to create a chat box in your organization, you could go ahead and build something like this for yourselves. Think of it, it could be IT equipment, it could be documents, it could be any other, techno any other large data sets which you want to create a chat kind of interface to go ahead and build as part of the overall setup. And the system could go ahead and help enable this as part, of, as, part of your, as part of your infrastructure setup. Now to build this, let's break this down. So what we call it as, what is UCS is 12 characters. It's a very simple question. Now, I, why I'm breaking this down? Because this is one thing that I want you all to leave with, that if we have to go ahead and implement, or we want to try our hands at AI, say simple chat box, then how exactly that you could go ahead and do that, like, like we've done it, right? This is a demo. So what is Cisco UCS is 12 characters. It's normal English word with, uh, with 12 characters. This is the input sequence, that what is, what is it that I'm giving the system? Then comes tokenization. It is often heard, you, you would have heard Llama 2 has 7 billion, 13 billion, 70 billion, Mistral has 30 billion. The parameters are tokens, right? So that is where we tokenize that. And to give you one token roughly corresponds to about 0.75 words of English language. It is a, it is a, uh, it is a norm that what to choose that which model to choose of how many tokens because the industry is vast. So for this use case, one token roughly corresponds to four characters or 0.75 words. And that's where the prompt tokens come, uh, come into picture. And LLM as a function. So there was, an, there, there was a UI, Llama 2 is the LLM that is baked in. We just queried what is Cisco UCS, which is inputting four tokens and basis training that has been done. So this is using 13 bill parameters for Llama 2. That system got trained basis which we have the output, that is completion of token. Once the, once the tokens are inputted, then the generation of token happens, and that's where you go ahead and complete the overall task. This is a simple use case where, we've implement, where, where we show it to our customers that it is simple to go ahead and implement it. Yes, there lies complexity in details, but it is not very complex that you have to think about, you have to start building a parallel infrastructure for that. You can reach out to us, where if, in case you're interested to build something of this as part of your infrastructure, your environment, and help, help you enable your, your use cases. I think that's, that's what I had to cover. Thank you for your...